Welcome back. This is Gaming Assembled. This is Crusader Kings 3. Uh, this is our inheritance campaign. This is uh, with John on the Isle of Man. And last time we met him and he was born and he inherited the realm from his parents and uh, was just a, a newborn baby. Uh, knew nothing. He was age zero, no skills, no anything. And all we had was his council to fall back on. And we met Alpin, uh, Ilpin, who is uh, uh, his guardian and is raising him. And we are basing all our decisions on, at the moment, what Ilpin would do. And so far, John is up to eight years old. He has a drunken fiancé uh, who is from the uh, northern Irish county of Ulster. And so we have uh, a beginnings of a story. And this is going to be a really story-driven playthrough uh, just to see where things go. So what have we got here? Uh, small changes in dialect. So there's a slight divergence in culture in the area. It's more a bit to the north of us in, sort of in Scotland. Uh, so that's fine. And so we are just letting time tick by. Um, the map is taking on its usual sort of mixed bag of appearance as things happen in different ways. We've got a little bit of Norwegian territory here. Obviously in the backdrop we've got the troubles and the, the fighting over England. Uh, it would seem that uh, William, the, William of Normandy uh, won his, uh, his battle for the realm, but he's not managed to get it all. Um, Hard Rada uh, in the north has taken some territory, so it seems to be a bit of a mix back there. So, a lesson in charity, we've got an event. Uh, look at the poor and the downtrodden, John. There are many of them, and some are truly in need. Others are mere charlatans seeking a handout. And so the bishop is explaining this to, to John, and bringing out a small purse of gold. Who amongst them are the most deserving of our charity today, my dear boy, he says, in handing me the purse. It seems as if... Sar Saren? Okay. Um, Saren wants me to hand the gold to those in need of it most. So, they all, so we can get uh, a the trait of generous, so and gain some piety. We can get fickle, or we can get arrogant. So none of them, they're all low life scum. Now, as I've said before, this isn't John's decision as to how he would do things. He would base how he is all children learn from the people who teach them. And our most loyal teacher, the one who's raised us, is our Elpin. And of his traits, if you look on here, arrogance is the is the main one for him. That's the one that we're gonna have. And so that is one the one that we will use because that is how he would behave. He would see that John would see that as the way to be. Because that's what Elpin's like. So we're gonna get arrogant. And that will work out all right for us in a way. Um, it will give us a little more prestige, and uh, it's not always the it's not the most Christian way of being, but that's not what Elpin's like. So an unexpected visit yet again. Uh, Ro Ronan is late for council meeting, and this time I will not let it pass. When I arrive at Ronan's chambers, I do not give him the courtesy of knocking. Ronan is seated by his desk, waiting, uh, writing furiously. As I clear my throat, he jumps out of his skin. He quickly stuffs a roll of parchment into his pocket and turns towards me with an uneasy look on his face. So, we can challenge him and say, what are you hiding? Show me. So that's one option. We can return later and search in secret. Or we can respect his privacy. So what would Elpin do? He would probably demand to know, I would say. He would want to know what's going on, tell me now, and he wouldn't really care whether he upset anybody about it. So I think we do that. Uh, did he really think I would not see that? Give it to me at once. Ronin hands me the crumpled parchment and crosses his arms. It's a list of foods and drinks and many familiar names, including that of my favourite... Trabador, that's an entertainer, I think. Uh, it would, it was supposed to be a surprise. I thought it would be a nice gesture to arrange a feast in your honour. Yet yeah, this is how you thank me. 
I'm sorry I had no idea. I knew that was coming because I knew that what that event did, but I still think it's the right way to be because it's what Aelpin would have done. And he is who we're basing this on. This is the premise of this playthrough. Unconventional coping. Driston is finally good for something. Life has been rather stressful lately. See, it is as a ten-year-old Earl. But he managed to help me relax. Whenever we are in conversation together, I make a point of questioning everything he says and joking about the conclusions he presents. So we're turning into a bit of a bully, it would seem. So, what have we got? We've got the option of, we potentially might get an increase in our prowess, so by beating him up. And he might become our rival, or closer to it. Or, it helps to blow the steam off. So, what do we think? So what I think is he probably, he'd probably go for, obviously, well, he's, he's very much the fighter, isn't he? He's, he's wrathful and he's callous. He doesn't really care what people think. And this is how he's training us to be, it would seem. We're turning into, John's turning into a little bit of a bully. So I think he would just beat up um, poor Driston here. And we might end up getting a little bit more prowess, we might not, no we didn't, but never mind. But I think Driston's going to end up being one of our, sort of our nemesis in the end, just by, by how much we're, we're beating on him. A story from the past. Come closer, I have a story I wish to tell you. My guardian Arpin says, beckoning me towards the bonfire. It's a story of when my twins, so these girls here, were born. Yes, my daughter Alpin cracks his knuckles and continues to tell his story as the flames from the bonfire lick the night sky. Remember the importance of your family, John. Wear the name of House Keltain with pride. The boar falls before the sword. So, I think we'd be engrossed. I think it's, it's a story by a campfire. I think John would be interested to hear it. Um, and it might be interesting to weave his daughters into the, the story somewhere. This is why I got him married, in a way, just so that we've got continuation of his family and we can continue on weaving them into the story. So I think... Oh, hang on. So... The idea here, this is a, an event that allows us to determine who John is attracted to. And I think, I mean, Aelpin is, is married, he's got a wife... I think we'd want the same. So I'm just going to slow things down a minute, because I think what we could do now is we can have a little look. Obviously, we're getting a little bit older now. We're at 10 years old. And I think Aelpin at this point would probably want us to start looking around. At if, you know, is there anywhere we can expand our realm? Now, we've currently got 357 men, which isn't a lot. Our ally has got 800 and so, 867 men. So we're looking for someone who we can possibly get a little bit of a claim on and uh, see if we can expand the realm a little bit because we don't want to stay just on our island forever. Now there aren't any major targets that we could take. We could look at trying to take this one. I think between us and our ally we would have the men to do it. Um, so that is something. The other option is we could, of course, wait until John comes of age in about six years' time, and that might give us more men, because our marshal might go up a little bit. So that's one option too, but our ally, he's 53, he might not be here. You never know. So I'm thinking we perhaps try and start making a move. So this one here... I think that would be a reasonable place for us to look at trying to expand to, try and expand our influence into Northern Ireland. Um, I don't think there's anywhere else logically that we would perhaps look. Um, so perhaps look into expanding into Ireland to begin with and go from there. This might be another good target. He's got slightly fewer men. So let's go with that one. Um, and we can try and call our ally in who doesn't like us all that much. So that's the risk, whether he, whether he would actually come. Um, hmm. Would he honour his... Would he honour his, uh, his commitment? That is the question. And that's the question I don't know answer to. 
Um, <clears throat> I suppose we can risk it. Let's try at least fabricating a claim because, you know, we can get started on it at the very least. It's going to take a couple of years anyway to uh, to happen. And we've just about got enough money to, to get a claim on, on something. Um, so we shall see what happens. Let's keep it going. We'll speed it up again and move on. Discovery at the end of my... Spy Master Ronin's last report, he pauses for a moment. There is something you should know about your courtier. In Indigird has many secrets, it seems. So she is my Chancellor's wife. Hmm, okay. So, there's a little bit of court intrigue happening. So, I've been corresponding with your Chancellor, I must have come to see you in a new light. Who is this guy? This is the King of, well, the Petty King of Sudrear. And he is now, let's get rid of that, there we go. Um, could even call him a friend. Well, that's nice. I mean, we've got the option of swearing fealty to him. Um, that's an option in terms of us expanding. We could swear fealty to someone bigger. That would mean that we couldn't claim the duchy, because that's a ducal title, but we shall see. Playdate. So, this is... Who is she? She is the... Ah, right. So she's she's the daughter of the... One of the people who came from... Um, she's the younger daughter uh, of, of the people who came and converted to Christianity uh, in the last episode, I think it was. Um, so, lots of fun to be around, she is a little shy most of the time, yet she still makes every time I see her special. Whenever our eyes meet, my stomach fills up with butterflies, I wonder if it, if she would like this fox glove that I found. So, Elpin's tried to encourage us to get to know people before, he certainly, he's got a wife, um, I think we'd go for this, and uh, she's perhaps... Oh, she only wants to be friends, so that's that's something. But it's his first his first crush possibly. Alone in the kitchen. Finally I have the kitchen all to myself. And convince the cook that I'm gonna clean the pots. With that promise made, he's left to get a rooster for tonight's dinner, leaving the cookery delectably unguarded. Right, so do we Gain the trait lazy and not do anything. Do we get gluttonous or do we clean the pots? So, where is he? Our man Elpin. Oh, got a bit of unrest. Let's call that while we're at it. So, our man Elpin. So, he is wrathful, he is arrogant, he is callous. What would he do? He's not lazy though. You know, he might be arrogant, but he's he does stuff. Um, so I'm not sure we'd go for lazy. He's also more of a military man, so I don't think he'd get let himself get fat. So I think, although he's not the nicest of characters, he probably would do his job. That's what he does. And so I think that is what we do. Now we've gained compassionate, which is possibly not what he would do, but... I think it, out of the other options, it was the one to do. So, we'll see how we go. Let's set this guy off, increasing the development in our thing, because he's not doing anything else. Um, so, a hook on that guy's expired. Never mind, we didn't really need that. Couldn't really get much out of it, it wasn't really anything important. So, we're up to 12 years old. Another what, four years, and no, 13 now, three years, and he will be, he will come of age, we'll get married to our drunken bride, and we'll go from there. The destruction of the wooden warrior. I found my victim, Driston, playing with his wooden warrior in the garden, whooping and laughing. He had no right to be so happy, and what was so special about that silly wooden warrior anyway? It broke it, it broke, yeah, start again. It broke as any old thing when I grabbed it from his hands and smashed it. I can't believe what I've done. I've been a bad boy. So that goes against the arrogance trait. 
so we get lots of stress for that. Or you should have seen his face. Well, Aelpin, the days of Aelpin ruling our life are coming to a close soon in the next few years, but he's wrathful, so I think we would go for that and lose a bit of stress in accordance with that. Alright, okay, and so here is our our claim, so we'll see that done. We've got enough money to do it. And how many troops? He's got a thousand men now. That sucks. I'm not sure that's a good idea then now. Because he's now only got 600 knot. So I think we hang fire on that one. We wait a little bit. I think if we try and go too soon, we can try and get some more claims perhaps. That might be good. We've got options of who we attack. Um, try and look for opportunities when we get them. But if we get the claims, we can then use them whenever. Ooh, hang on. 400 knot, that might be a good one. So he's only got 400 knot men. He would be a reasonable target, I think. So we'll go with that. We'll fabricate that claim. And we'll try and take what lands we can to expand our territory when we can. Okay, the child preacher. So that's that. So I watched my rattling courtier, Ulach, something like that, talk to some other children about God. They were laughing and rearing at her for a while before the pushing began. Despite the mockery, she tried to keep keep up the lesson until the first blow landed. So first of all, who's punching a four-year-old girl? Um, I think, so we've got the option of I'll protect you and regain brave. She becomes our friend. Calm or zealous. Now, I don't think Elpin is particularly... There's nothing to suggest that he's particularly religious, but he's a warrior, okay? I don't think he'd be calm. I don't think he's particularly religious, but I think he might be brave. So we'll go with that. So we've gained brave, and that'll help us quite a bit. Oh, more stories around the fire. Uh, what a beautiful night. The bonfire crackles and pops, spitting smoke up into the night sky. The honey tree skewed in the end of my stick slowly caramelizes and I watch it slowly changing colour with interest. We've had this before. So this is about becoming friends with people again, which I think he would want us to do. Elpin he's encouraged that in the past. So like we did last time, we'll go with this is fun. So let's have a look. So we've got 15 months left on that. He's restoring order here in our realm. Uh, he's adding more development to the realm. All good. Let's see, how old are we now? We are 14. Two more years. Not long. And I think we're turning into a reasonable warrior. Um, you know, education is going all right in terms of the military education. And I'm thinking, unless this guy's all of a sudden got loads and loads more men, which he's got some, and he's got an ally. Ooh. How the mighty have fallen. William of Normandy is now only a baron. Wow. He's gone down quite a way, but he's the ally of our... Um, so his, his son has taken his place as the Duke of Normandy, and... And House of Wessex is back in back in charge in England. Wow, that's uh, quite a turnaround. So, and he's actually under. Is he under? There we go. That's our thing. Let's, let's just have a little look at this. Let's slow this down just so we can have a look. Um, why is that a different colour? Strange. It's almost as if it's under Norway, but it's not. It says England. Anyway. So yes, yeah, so that's interesting. So the chap that we're looking to attack, he's got 700 men plus another. So he's got about 800 men. I've got 340. He's got 650. I think we might just about manage it, especially since the former Duke of Normandy's troops are a bit further away. So I think as soon as we've got the money to do it, I think we go for it. Now, getting that money might take a bit of doing, because we've only 
getting half a gold per month. But we will get there. Maturing feelings. I remember fondly all the good times I shared with Zvinislava when we were younger. Even if she now has entered the world of adults, she will always be dear to me, even though she never did return my feelings. Okay, so, well, we could look at trying to get her married to someone. Um, what we could look at doing is sorting by prowess and trying to bring in another knight. Someone who can serve our realm. And that would be probably useful. Um, so we need it to be matrilineal. Sort by prowess. No, by prowess. There we go. He's pretty good, 33. He would fit in nicely. So let's bring him in. And we've got another knight then. So that's nice. And we've come of age. Excellent. So we're now our own man. We've had all our education from Alpin. Alpin, whatever. And I think because of that, we would continue on our military studies. And we would want to lead from the front because we've been in the background for a little while. And so we'd want to get forward and do our thing. So let's have a look at our traits, our adult traits. We've got arrogant, we've got compassionate, we've got brave skilled tactician and a forder and that will be really useful for going across water um, that gives us crosses rivers and straits without advantage penalties so going across there will be very helpful with that trait so um we are still obviously in debt so we'll just try Oh, there we go. That's. I think we, we do that. We get our money. We've got some money now. So now we can go to war. And I think we try this while we can. And we try and get a little bit of an extension on our realm. Let's call in our ally. Thankfully we'll accept. Because that would have gone very badly if he didn't. And let's take our men across the water and link up with our Irish allies and then we'll go down and try and conquer our first territory there we go, across the water we go wait for the allies to come back again because the AI sent them over Let's go to war. Where can we see that they're there? They're waiting for us. <coughs> and here we go. Combat has been joined. And we're winning. That's good. So I think what we'll do is we're going to siege this down. Uh, can we grant some you? Yes, we can. Anyone of any use that we could hire and bring over? Might conversion recruit? Yeah, you might be useful. So we'll do that. And ooh, I wasn't paying attention to what was going on there. Oh dear, looks like we, did we get beaten then. Yes, we did, I think. We have to withdraw, maybe. So let's head in. Let's try and get the territory, siege it down. And there we go, the war leaders we captured, so I think, let's see, well we're going to win this anyway, so let's see if we let's siege it down, and if we do, we'll then ransom him, get a little bit of extra gold out of him. And then leave it at that. Oh, there we go. I ended before I could, but never mind. But meanwhile, we've been raided, it would seem. Now, there probably wouldn't have been anything we could do about that, even if we had in there, but never mind. So I think for now, we'll end that. We have now got our first bit of overseas territory. We'll 
get that control there first, and then we'll restore, we'll get control here. I think we'll look at converting the culture and the religion. And that is a good place to end for today. So thank you very much for joining us for this second part. We are going to build on this from, from here and see how John develops um, in terms of his development. Oh, we'll just get him his first trait. I think we'll do that one. Get a little bit off the Cassie's belly in claims. So it doesn't cost us quite so much. But um, we'll leave it there. We'll see how he develops going forward. Um, please do consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel. It really, really helps. Helps the channel to, to grow. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.